Hello, Elagros and the Frenchies. It's Tom. Welcome back to my kitchen. On today's menu, we are going to be reviewing Night Unison. Yeah, that is a brand new Pokemon expansion coming to the card game probably in May. It's coming to Japan in January 11th, and if you don't live in Japan, it's just going to come later. But it's fun to take a look at the new cards anyways, and before you ask me why I'm talking like this, it's like, you know, we're doing reviews, we're reading text and explaining stuff, so that is boring. So I'm going to do this in the best redneck accent a po Asian man can say do. You know what, we'll just do it like every other card so it doesn't drive you too insane if you're not insane already. Okay, so let, uh, yeah, let's get started. Here we go, let's talk about Venomon GX. Uh, man, there's a lot of text in this, so bear with me. This is a stage one GX card, pretty easy set up. And it has only two attacks. First one, Secrets of the Ninja. It two shots GX Pokemon. But doesn't one shot some big cards like Buzzwall, so keep that in mind. Two, if you play Koga's Trap, that is a draw. No, that is a supporter. That supporter confuses and poisons your enemy. It means you cannot play a draw supporter, but if you do that, if you can manage that, 90 damage. You get the poison, you get the confusion from that Koga's trap, and that one shots up to stage one GX Pokemon with the choice man. Yeah, that's gonna put a lot of damage, so that is pretty darn good for that energy cost you are paying. Alright, so you gotta have some other Pokemon drawing your cards like Swampert, Zora Arc GX that can also use double colorless. Yeah, then after that you can't play Koga's trap, because otherwise you can't draw when you play this. Number two, you can play Janine. Janine is a draw supporter. You look at the next four cards. You pick two that you like and the other goes back to the rest of the deck. And then you prevent all damage done to this card by tag team GX Pokemons. Actually, every basic GX Pokemon count, so if they're using a tag team, they can't hurt your Venom off. But it only does 110 damage. They'll probably die in the next turn if you don't do anything too. So, given all those two effects, they do sound sound useful so I'm gonna rank this as man this is gonna be a good color here we go oh you forgot the GX attack Donald that does 60 damage you shuffle your hand and you draw 10 more cards so if you really stuck well they'll unstuck you and then you can do some uh well probably finish them off with one of these attacks here because you that does 200 with 60 uh probably nothing's gonna survive that overall man Venomoth you are a lot of ugly looking insect but you know, man, you're strong, you're useful. We, uh, we got a job for you. Okay, so, okay, normal, next one. Next one, Victory Bell. Man, that one had a lot of text, this one does not. You only care about his first attack here. Okay, so we gotta talk about his first attack. 10 damage, yeah! Then there's 60 damage for every special condition. Shh, son of a birch. How do you load those special conditions up? Koga's, that Koga card we talk about, confuses, poisons. Where do you get the burn? Another stage 2 card called Delphox. How do you set them both up? Another stage 2 card called Meganium. Or just set them both up with rare candies. Then you can actually do this off with one energy. You will also need a draw Pokemon because without it, you will get stuck because you have to play Koga's in order to do any damage. Yeah, it's a, it's based on a support to damage, yeah. It is hard to load three special conditions up on an enemy. We might be able to pull it off for two matches, but after that, that is it. A minor fun factor to see, not gonna be that good. So, moving on, okay. So how about this one right here, Tentacle? Well, I don't quite like it that much because it doesn't do enough damage. Right now, cool Tentacles, you can move an energy around from one of your Pokemons to another, but either Pokemons just attack for too cheap. They need one energy card to attack, or you can just have a lot of energy acceleration. That just doesn't matter. So, and the rapid attack 60 damage is just isn't enough. The coin flip is okay. Paralysis, you might be able to get a bunch of heads in a row, but overall, it just does too low. It's nice if you use his energy cost, but I think you should just trash this. It's not even that good. Uh, moving on. All right, so back to normal voice. Seeking. Seeking for what energy does an average of 90 damage. That is extremely good for one energy card. What you need to do is give it a poker tool, flip six coins, and each coin does 30 damage each. Now the variance isn't gonna help you get too much, you're gonna be around 90 every time. Choice ban 120 against the GX, and tag teams will just hate that. This thing two shots tag team GXs. And it has two shots pretty much everything, but 
you know, you need to be one-shotting non-GX Pokemons as well. So that is where it's going to run into a problem. I like it still. The fun factor is much higher than all those other cards we've talked about. And the usability of these cards is much higher. You'll be able to be easily... We'll be able to easily do something with this. So, Seeking, I love you more than the rest of the other cards over there. All right, moving on. Uh, Kyurem. Mm. Kyurem GX. The only thing you should care about is the Hell Prism attack. It does a two-shot KO, just like Venomoth. Not enough to one-shot Buzzwall GX, who also has 130. So that may be a problem. It is a very high expensive energy cost. Discard two water energies in order to be able to do that. We can fix this problem with Naga Nadels, two of them, and a Quagsire that is three bench space, that is three stage one Pokemons, in order for this to completely, infinitely combo. And be prepared, you must also give it an additional energy once it dies, but it permanently locks your opponent. Hmm, has a fun fact to it, probably not that good. We will leave it at that. Bench space, development, mm, that's where it will hurt. Moving on. Okay, so, uh, let me see, back to normal voice. Raichu. Raichu is okay stuff. You can attack with it, doesn't last that long. It's kind of like a mud break that we pulled off, mud sale that we pulled off so recently. But this never give up. I'm gonna rate it right now. You probably not worth your deck space. You have to be behind three prize cards, meaning your GX Pokemon died first. Then you can attach all the lightning energies that you, let you lost back to your Pokemons. Then the right you will die afterwards, or your opponent will Guzma something off your bench. This is what we're thinking in an ideal vacuum that it's not going to get you that comeback factor that this thing is advertising. So, deck space, I don't know, uh, nope, not that great. Okay, what do we have here? How about with this one? Oh, I, uh, yes. it is, uh, so what is this one? Oh my gosh, this is not cute. Well, the thing is, this card is going to be very expensive. Everybody is going to want this card. This is the new Tapper Lily GX Coconut Master. Yes, this card is going to be worth a lot of money. Because the ability helps you draw more cards. You play it to your bench, and then you draw six cards. Yes, and that will replace Coconut Master when it leaves this September, and everybody will need one of this. Because when you are stuck, you have to Ultra Ball this mouse out, otherwise you will be dead. Okay, so that is that, and if you have a Lightning deck, it can fight a little bit. You're not supposed to fight with this. You're not supposed to fight with Coconut Master. Okay, so that so that's work. Moving on, uh, Charger Bug. Charger Bug is a double lightning energy for Vicavolt GX or Vicavolt. Both cards are actually pretty good. This card is gonna be pretty darn good and fun for those decks, as long as the Vicavolt GX deck is good, which it kind of is. It would be easy. I would think this would be easy to do. Man, Vicavolt, you know, you might just have your day. I'm, it's it's good. Moving on. So we have to see how good the new Vicavolt is. And the older ones we know are really good too. So this new Vic oh yeah, what do I shake? What do I not do? Yeah, this new Vicavolt right here. So it actually it wants to fight. You gotta fight with this dude. Stealth body. This is stadium around. Those buzz on lichen rocks are popular. Yeah, they can't one shot it. Well, they can, but they gotta have lots of energies. They can't abuse that weakness damage. So that's pretty good because there are lots of fighting Pokemon's around. Uh, how about this attack here? Well, it's kind of expensive. You gotta get like four energies to get that going, man, dude. And then you get a two shot, 120. Remember, you need 130 to one shot Buzzwell, so yeah, I wouldn't expend all my energies just to do that. Certain matchups is just gonna cost way too darn much. But if you want a one shot like a GX Pokemon, yeah, give it a choice, man, and you can do that. Give it the help of a certain stadium, too. Shrine of Punishment. It can one-shot big GX Pokemons, and it will. It just costs a lot, way too many energy. So, this is a tough one. It's very doable for sure. Probably not going to be good, but we can make that work for a video for sure. All right, so, uh, normal voice, Zero Aura. Zero Aura does the same thing as the Vicavolt, except you do not have a choice. You must discard all the time. But you have to get lots of energies. All energies must discard. We're talking about five to one shot a tech team GX. Uh, we're talking about four for most everything else. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe three for a basic. It's just expensive to do, but you can pull it off with a Magnezone. We probably can make it work for one, two matches, and that is about it. I don't think it's just gonna be, we're gonna see this too much. So, move it on. All right, we're back to this now. Oh, oh, oh more shadow. All right, this card looks useless, guys. Because all it does is just barely discards the stadium, man. And you could just discard stadium with poker tools, playing your own stadium. Why the heck would you play a Marsh Shadow for? So right now, I don't see any value out of this. Any true value. Like, maybe there's a spot where you can't do any of those things and you can do this. So until then, this card looks trash for most decks. All right, moving on, we got the Quaxire that is a fighting type and uses water energies. Which means you can combine the big, powerful water energy acceleration that water decks have. They have Quaxire, they have Nagata Dells, Aqua Patches, which will not work for this, but will work for the other Quaxire, and use the benefits of fighting decks. Which is the Ansi, which makes it hit 140 enough to get out Buzzwall, those 130 HP Pokemons. This will be very easy to do. We're gonna easily get two wins out of this and uh and I want to try this out. So Quaxire, don't you worry, you're gonna have your video and you're gonna make me very happy because this is easy to pull off. Moving on, alright, what do we got here? Ah, Gliscor. Oh man, my oh, my job's gonna be quick, because this card is trash. You can use any energy acceleration to it, but it just doesn't do enough damage. And it just dies too quickly. So, uh, back to you, Donald. Greninja Zor Arc GX Tag Team. It says tag team, gonna be darn easy, because so. 250 HP, Dark Poles, one-shot kills. There's 30 damage for every Dark Energy across all your Pokemons. How do you get those fast up? It's called Nagata Dells, Dark Rise. Basically, you have to discard lots of your Pokemons, lots of your energies quickly, and you can quickly get that, meet that condition. In Expanded, this will be dirt easy, easy, easy to do. But in Standard, it'll be a bit slower. You probably be going for two shots at the start. Maybe you get to one shots. However, Night Unison. If you have, let's see, put. Oh, if you have three energies. If you have two of energies, you can just put dark energies from your discard pile onto your uh, poke bench. That's like whatever. But if you have three energies, you can grab two energies each as well, and that could fill up your bench with lots of energies, helping dark poles, charging new Pokemon's up, which. Probably so our credential GX is, and yeah, get things going. And if it hurts, it's really compatible with Acerola with healing text. This thing should be easy to do. Expanded, dirt easy. Uh, like standard, gonna be a bit slower, but doable. Okay, I've said that. Uh, okay, what do we do? What, what voice do we do? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, okay, okay. All right, dude, Sharpedo, man. This card is not that great, but I think it could be okay to pull off, man. Here's what it does. When you evolve this, you look at the next six cards. If there are any dark energies there, you can attach it to. You can attach it to uh, Sharpedo. But it has to be dark energies, because this attack, if you don't use dark energies, you don't get the damage bonus, and it just only kind of does uh, 60. Yeah, but if you use dark energies, then it does 120. If you all three of these are dark energies. You can't add more, dude, but man, four energies for a Pokemon that dies in one turn. See, that's why it's not going to be that great, but I think I could pull it off for like one deck video. So, moving on, Greninja. Greninja does a one-shot kill on the weakest Pokemon in the game at the moment. The Pokemon with the fewest HP dies. So, it could be yours or your opponent's. I don't know if the rule says, hey man, just choose only yours and the lowest will die. Or you have to make sure that you have the highest HP stuff. Because you don't want to knock yourself out, but you're getting a prize card, it dies. The big important Pokemons are probably not dying. They'll probably keep fighting your Greninja. So this one's a bit hard to... It seems hard to pull off. But I think I can do it for a video. I'm not sure how to get this one yet. This attack kind of sucks. At least any Greninja can do this. So you may be fighting off a... Uh, using Greninja GX for the start and ending it with Greninja. Something like that. We'll think about it when the time comes. Because this is a little bit tricky for me to think out to work out. Uh, Malamar. Malamar has very... Malamar has a very potential powerful effect, but it's probably not that reliable. Here we go, Hypnotic Control. You look at your opponent's hands, and if there's a good Pokemon there, it's gotta be a good Pokemon there. If it's not there, you're in trouble, man. Yeah, so you look at it, you use one of its attacks. Can't be a GX attack. 
Otherwise, that'd be pretty darn good if you could. Then you do use it for one energy. Looks great, right? But if they don't got a good Pokemon anywhere, and the po or the attack just doesn't work for your deck, like Lost March, you don't got any Lost cards in a lot, so that's just not gonna work out. So you probably not gonna be too good, but you're definitely really fun. We'll look for some uh, nice victims when it's our time to try these out. So yeah, I'm excited for this one, but yeah, I know this card isn't gonna be that great. There's a nice item coming up that helps with that, but we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so Gardevoir, Sylveon, and GX Tag Team. Tag Team, easy, easy, easy. Fairy Song. You get to look for two fairy energies. Put them into your bench Pokemon any way you like. Stack them up, put them here and there. Yeah, then that's that's a very good turn two move. Number two, attack, 150. Yes, it knocks out both while three energies. Wait, these have to go to your bench? Oh, you can't attach it to yourself. Oh, that's, you can still work around that. Okay, so 150 damage, then you can move energies wherever you want. They can be fairy energies, they can be double colors, rearrange them however you like. And this will help out with Magical Miracle GX. This does a straight one-shot kill, 200 damage, that'll do something. Maybe not to another tag team, but that's gonna do a lot of damage. But if you have six energies on this, you can reset your opponent's hand to zero. Which probably, man, if you want to have no cards, you better top deck something good. Or have Banana Master on. So that, it's gonna be easy to pull off. For sure. Is it gonna be that, that great? I'll have to try it out. We'll have to see. But it's definitely gonna be easy to get value. Find value for it while we're playtesting this for sure. Alright, moving on. Alright. So we're gonna look at the Clefable now. The Clefable is easy to understand if you have different fairy energies. Actually, fairy energies on every single one of your bench Pokemon. You need to have it on as many different Pokemons as possible. So fill up your bench with fairy energies at least one. And it does 30 damage each. Also counts the front one too. So that's six total maximum. Which does 190 damage. So 190 damage for one energy is very, very good. Compared to, uh... Uh, the Granbull, yeah, yeah, so that, I think it's, I th it's gonna be very easy to pull this one off. Is it gonna be great? This one has much more potential than other cards. I'm looking very forward to it for sure. Alright, so moving on, uh, uh, Toga, Toga, Toga Kiss. If you're dealing with, uh, if somehow Tapu Koko becomes so popular, bench damage is everywhere, then you play this. This is a stage shoe deck that does nothing but heal 30 damage for all your fairy Pokemons. And a normal fight? I don't know, that 30 doesn't tip the scale too much when there's big damage going on. Maybe with the new tag teams, that 30 can help out here and there, but this is stage 2. You gotta have it be a good reason, you know, it's not healing too much. Yeah, this is stage 2. I don't know if you have the deck space or you want to set this up if this is helping you. I'd say no. Niche, very niche use. That's how it is. Moving on. Alright. Alright, dude, this thing is useless. I don't even want to talk about it. There's a lot of pretty much all coin flips for this. And the effects aren't that great. You got the paralysis. You got looking at your opponent's hand. Choosing maybe 0 to 1 to 2 cards. And making them reshuffle that. You know, you need more than that to lock them down. So, Aromatease, you're going to not be that great. Okay, so Radigan here. Hey, man, with the fangs. Two teats. Escape Fang only works with Evolve Pokemon. Only does 70 damage. But when it does, uh, you get to retreat back to your bench and throw out something nasty like maybe a Wobbuffet or actually doesn't exist anymore. Like a Shuckles or something. So it's like a hit and run attack but that only works against your evolutions. Is this going to be great? I don't think so. Damage is kind of low. Combo is like, man, I don't know if this is worth my back space or a combo to even try to pull this off. So I'm going to leave it be. That's, I mean, I need to do a lot more than 70. Against GXs, yeah, you can choice ban, burst it up. It's gonna work for one or two matches, but after that, consistent value drop for deck. General consistent value is just pretty bad there. Alright, so, you know, I am not keeping track of which voice I'm on. We're just gonna go back to this one right here. Vicky Licky! Alright, this card, it's not that great. It's kinda like a really bad mud brain. Got less HP, got less damage for the same energy cost. And you gotta do a coin flips too. So, this is a bad mud brain deck. You just saw mud brain yesterday. Well,. It's a bad mud bread deck, or a couple days ago. Moving on, Licky Licky, you're not that great. Finally, we're done with all the Pokemon, so now we take a look at the trainer cards. Here we go, Electromagnetic Radar. Look at... No, you discard two cards like an Ultra Ball. Unlike an Ultra Ball, you must find Lightning 
GX Pokemons. Or EX if you're playing in uh, Expanded. What could you pull from this? Dendena GX and Tapu Koko. Now, unlike an Ultra Ball, you get two instead of one. So, yes, it somewhat replaces Ultra Balls, but it's very specific in what you pull. Not gonna replace it completely, but you may add one or two if you are using one of those decks. Not too much, though, because it's not that great. It's not as uh, versatile as Ultra Ball. But in Lightning Decks, that you need to do it anyways? Yeah, get that extra Lightning GX into your hand. Then, moving on to Surprise Box helps probably only that Malamar. They got a nice Pokemon in their discard pile. You can copy its attack over and over. But, uh, like I said, it ha you have to have a compatible good attack, and it's gotta be there, so... At least it makes it more consistent, but the strategy overall, probably... Even though fun it sounds, yeah, not too consistent when you pull it up. Poke Gear! Poke Gear lets you like the next seven cards. Choose Supporter, like a Draw Supporter, Guzma, and lets you play it. What's the difference between playing this and a normal supporter? Well, yes, likely you're gonna be able to play a draw supporter, but you know, you might be able to look here and there, choose between a Guzma, Cynthia, thin your deck, so instead of loading with like seven supporters, you can squeeze some of this in here. Yeah, might it might make things transition so smoother. I don't know, I'll have to try this out and see if this is better than like after your four Cynthias and four Lilies, maybe you might want to use one or two of these. We'll see. We will see. Secret Hood doesn't seem like it's gonna get good value. It blocks Pokemon abilities, enemy Pokemon abilities to whomever wears it. So like this is where I try to shoot you with 20 damage. Oh no, it's not gonna work to whoever is wearing the hood. Like you gotta have better solutions to that, and it's just too specific. I currently do not see a value in expanded standard for this. This thing, no. We have the fairy charms back again on fairy Pokemons. It blocks damage completely from GX Pokemons of the element. Blocks lightning element Pokemons. Are there good lightning Pokemons going around? There are GXs? Well, they're certainly making them, so we'll see about that. Are there good Pokemons that use abilities that are GXs? Called Sword Arc GX. Rayquaza, plenty of others? Yeah! Oh man, this is probably gonna be the most useful of the fairy charms, so. Ah uh, yeah, Faradek, you have a lot of things to go with. And now finally we get to see Janine and Koga from uh, from uh, Venomoth. Yeah, so Janine's the draw. Look at the next four cards. Pick two you like, the rest go back. Should you be using this in your other decks? No, you should keep using Cynthia Lilies because they just give you more bolt pull. And you get to keep every, well, ev yeah, everything, almost. Maybe it might be, no, no way, no. It's just not as consistent for Venomoth needs it. Venomoth also needs this, and certain, a few cards love special conditions, or scale up special conditions. Muck GX, that victory bell that we saw, so it's essential to those strategies. Are they going to be good overall? I don't think so, but this has uses. It has a use. Here we go, Lieutenant Surge's battle. If you're losing in prize cards, you can play this, then you can play three other support Two up two more supporters after this. So it lets you play technically one extra supporter. Guzma, then to a draw supporter. You gotta be loaded up with draw supporters for this to be work, Sad. You gotta be losing. And this kinda depends, like, do you find your does your deck specifically tends to fall behind? Maybe because of the slower setup and stuff? And this is good for catching up. Otherwise, yeah, we'll have to see. It just depends on the nature of your deck. Okay, so, otherwise, hey, man, you might not even be able to trigger it. It might be dead weight, and that's the bad thing. Versatility. Is it always going to be useful? That's a no. Not like Cynthia, not like other main draw supporters. Um, these are reprints. These are reprints. So we're done! There! <laughs> okay, I forgot. I forgot to do some of their voices. It was hard to keep track of where I was on that. So, we're not going to... We're done with that. No more screechy voices. Overall. This is kind of going like other expansions previously. There are plenty of cards that are fun, that change the game, like this is cool to explore, or this will change the meta. Definitely the tag teams, but there are a lot more trash cards, like older expansions here. Things like list score, things like, uh, well, not this card. Licky Licky, those cards aren't as great. They did good with Lost Thunders. They make a lot of junk cards, junk, like, I wouldn't say junk card. Non-GX cards, kind of viable, 
much more. This one, not so much. But still similar to past expansions. So, somewhat disappointed. But Donald, be happy. You got new cards are coming to the game. So that's the bright side. All right, so that is that. Thank you uh, for sticking with me, Integrals and Differentials. I hope that was kind of fun to do. Uh, tell me if you want to like about. <laughs> I tried to like. Yeah, I don't want to do another like uh, just deck explanation. I want to make a little off. All right, that is that. Let me know in the comments. Thank you, Integrals and Differentials. Take it easy, stay safe. I want to see you guys next time. Bye bye.